All right, hello again, everyone. Um, for those of you who just joined, this is Rachel, and uh, I'm with 365ninja.com. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we jump into our presentation, uh, we are, I'm, I'll just give a few housekeeping notes, um, but you're here for flexible work style solutions with Office 365. And we have um, Amit Panchal on the line who's going to do our presentation today. So I want to thank you all for attending. Um, like I said, we're going to jump into our presentation soon. Time permitting, at the end, we'll have an opportunity for a Q&A session with Amit. And you should, those of you who are on um, GoToWebinar in the audience here, you should have a questions section in your control panel. And you are welcome to enter your questions in there. I'll be keeping an eye on them. Um, and we can kind of facilitate and go through some of those questions at the end. Um, I also wanted to mention that this session is being recorded, so if you need to step out for any reason, um, I'll be sending out a link to the recordings of this session and actually all of the 365 Ninja Live sessions um, shortly after the event, probably at least by end of day tomorrow. Um, and we do have two more great sessions today in 365 Ninja Live. Um, one at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, one at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and if you haven't checked those out, please go to live.365ninja.com. So let's jump in. Um, our session is today Flexible Work Style Solutions with Office 365, and it's my pleasure to announce, uh, or to introduce, I should say, Amit Panchal from Microsoft, and I know he's going to tell you a little bit more about himself once we get started, so I will let him give you his great background and experience. So with that, I'll turn it over. Um, Amit, you can take it away, and um, I'll let you know if we have, towards the end, if we have questions that we can talk about um, to follow up with. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Amit Pinchal. I'm an enterprise technology strategist at Microsoft. I've been here for four years, and prior to this, I had a variety of roles in technology IT. I was director of technology at McGraw-Hill. Uh, McGraw-Hill owns Standard & Poor's, J.D. Power, supporting a 225-yard user location for 26,000 people. I have responsibility for AD, messaging, virtualization, VMware, mainframes for about 10,000 plus servers. And that's about six years. Uh, prior to that, I spent some time in the U.S. Navy uh, operating a warship in the Gulf. Uh, and for my personal time, I'm also a professor at New Jersey Institute of Technology teaching operations management and project management as well. So uh, personally, I, I, you know, I've been at Microsoft four years, and to be honest, I was a bit hesitant to come to Microsoft. Uh, my hiring manager, my boss, said, Mick, you've done some great work as a customer. Come please share your experiences and share your things you've learned in moving to the cloud with our other customers. And that's what attracted me here to Microsoft in my role today. And I am measured by helping customers move to the cloud adopt the cloud, and help transition to the cloud. As part of my job, my whole, my whole core responsibility, I love doing that, love meeting with partners, customers, and discuss how Microsoft Office 365 and the work we're doing is helping everybody in all industries and in all uh, realms of our opportunities there. And I think this is a great time to be in technology. Uh, it, things are constantly changing, and more so, the world of work is changing here. You know, we're constantly being challenged by new millennials coming to the workforce, an older workforce, new devices. We're, we're constantly developing you know, new ways to work with our PCs, my phones, my tablets. And the challenge is our employees, our consumers, our partners, our, our customers are always asking for better connectivity, better connection back to these vendors. We're being inundated with tweets and Facebook likes and so forth. So much so that people are giving us kudos on Twitter. People are giving us bad praise on Twitter as well, saying, I lost my luggage. How do you become more accessible and respond to all your customer interactions here? More so, our employees are asking for us to be, we want to be more mobile here. I want the freedom, freedom to work wherever I am, whatever I need to. They're almost coming to the work expecting a fully mobile, transparent workforce. They're asking their bosses, what do you mean I have a desk? What do you mean I have a landline phone? I have to come to the office every day? It doesn't work for me here. They're asking for a, a work style. They can work when they want to, where they want to. They're saying my office should be my laptop and Starbucks, specifically what I'm asking for. And more so, they're saying that I should be able to do my job 
no matter where I am, in the middle of Times Square or the middle of Central Park, and we want to be connected at all times using any device across anywhere on the planet. And as such, they have an expectation from us. All our applications must be, number one, available to us across any device, available to us on any platform, mobile, tablet, PC, and lastly, all our applications must be socially relevant. I can like, I can dislike, I can forward all through a social platform here. I think this has had, has had a profound implication on our workplace, and more importantly, a profound implication on our work style. So let's take a look at some of the work styles that are trends are that are influencing our workplace here. First of all, I think we can all agree. You know, we're here at different times of the day, how you know, having phone calls in the middle of the night. I think the work-life balance is almost a work-life blur now. You do your job when you have to, you go to your kids' appointments, your soccer games, your doctor's appointments when you can, and you build your work and family life cohabiting together. I know many of my colleagues have one calendar. It's not a family calendar or a personal calendar. It's a single calendar where they intertween their family activities as well as the personal activities together. And in essence, the work-life has become a blur. The digital generation, our kids, our millennials coming to the workforce, have grown up digital. They expect certain things from the productivity platforms. I think we can all say that the consumer revolution is already more ahead of the IT generations than we have right now. Many of the applications we see now, many of the users are coming in with better technology from the consumer side than we have in the enterprise space. So, you know, they're very tech savvy, they know what they want, it's very fast paced, and they're comfortable having multiple devices here. So the key message is that the proliferation of consumer devices and the digital generation entering our workforce is leading to higher user expectations for technology here. The ubiquitous connectivity and the fast-paced nature of modern business that travels around the world is eroding personal and professional lives. As a result, people's individual work are an increasingly important part of how they get things done. And users are increasingly have the final say in what technology they use to get their job done. That's why I'm always hearing about the CMO and the CXO having more influence over IT. There's a great Gartner case study out there saying that CMO will spend more on IT than the CIO will do as well. And this trend through consumerization is challenging technology personnel on how to deliver this quicker and better. So we at Microsoft believe consumerization is great as it unleashes people's productivity and their passion and the opportunity to drive innovation and competitive advantage. Now I want to challenge everybody here. Today we have about two or three billion people on the internet. There's still half the world who doesn't have internet connect connectivity. When the rising minority, the people in the Eastern Pacific Rim, people in Latin America, when they come online, the thought power that will be created, the new ideas that will emerge here, that's going to change the way the world operates here. New thinking, new thought processes will be out there. And our job is to make sure they have the tools delivered to enable them and offer the new thinking to the workforce here. Uh, we believe the power in saying yes to the user and allowing them to do what they want on the request they want through different devices, through different platforms, and also in regards to having the ability to do work where they want to, whenever they want to as a whole. And as a result of this, the world of work is changing, which requires us to say that our technology needs to also be changing. From mobile PCs to mobile phones, and now slates, tablets, now we'll go a step further. The kioscs at the airport, at the hotel here, the fully touch immersion experience, and an assumed to be holographic experiences here. All those are going to be immersed together to allow us to be socially interactive, have IM, have texting all together. So we need technologies that are smart and agile as we are here. So as part of as we mature through our corporations, through our enterprises, our technology strategy has to become more important than ever here. We need to provide our people the tools they need to get the job done in a world that is very different than just a few years ago. And if you think about it, Moore's Law is very relevant here. Technology is improving dramatically here. Back in the 1960s, it took a giant computer to launch space shuttle. That same computer now exists on my watch here. So the question is, we're going to have more tools available to us with faster processing. Can we leverage those tools to most effectively meet possible here? So within IT, you know, being an IT administrator myself here, you know, I grew up with many challenges here. How do we provide 
anytime, anywhere access. How do I drive past your productivity? However, how do I keep my system and data safe? Let's be honest, we've heard about hacks, breaches, Home Depot hack, you know. So the funny thing is, the credit card monitoring company, they were hacked as well. It's gone to a point where many of the enterprises are almost expecting a hack. They're saying it's going to happen, not where, but when it's going to happen. As, as a safety measure, they have insurance policy against these hacks here. But we in IT have to know how can we keep our system and data safe. So because if we are hacked, what do we lose? We lose market share. We lose perception. We lose the trust in our customers and our consumers. So we want to make sure that we're delivering safe technology and we're streamlining operations and to ensure we maintain a competitive edge here. So the changing work environment presents many challenges, not only for IT departments, but also for leadership of CEOs, CFOs as well here. And the issue is that consumerization brings up is, how do you give your employees the connections they need to key apps and data while they're on the road from different devices so they can be productive while at the same time protecting sensitive data? We want to help you address these challenges and questions today by providing anytime, anywhere access, keep your data safe, and making sure we still deliver a cost-effective solution. Now, I think we all know the old way of culture was having everybody come into the office, you give them a device, you give them a phone, and give them a cue. You know, that was the old way of thinking. The new way, and we believe is a different, is a better way as well here, is our uncle is to deliver enterprise-based functionality and provide the experiences on devices that people will love and expect here while delivering enterprise-grade solutions. This is where Microsoft and Windows can deliver unique value, and we believe Microsoft is in the best position to deliver depth and experiences across all platforms, across all environments here. I think you've seen a phenomenal change since Satya came on board here. We are creating experiences and devices on all form factors here, tablets, phones, mobile devices, touch screens as well here. And the hardware innovation we're seeing is being re-innovated by our partners, Lenovo, IBM, Dell, and so forth. They're bringing all that together and saying we're gonna deliver new experiences. But more so, Satya has made it paramount that we will deliver experiences and, and your know, form factors and uh, applications to where the consumer resides, where the consumer is using. So if that consumer is on an Apple iPad or Android tablet, we will make sure we deliver our mission critical applications to all those devices and ensure they're enterprise grade. So a couple of things we're seeing here is that we at Microsoft also have learned that today we live in a mobile first, in a cloud first world. Soon there will be more than 3 billion people with internet connected devices powered by cloud services. And all these things have, have one thing in common here. The exponential growth a connected device is going to lead to a growth in the cloud. And that's why we truly see that the cloud is a way we're going to deliver all new forms of technology and all new forms of innovation here. And the opportunity for the enterprise leader today is to reimagine their business in this mobile first, cloud first digital age. And the question to ask them is, how can you truly enable your employees to be productive wherever they are across any device? So I thought I'd take a moment to share with you some of the transformation we've gone through Microsoft as well here. You know, let's, let's be frank, you know, we've had competition come at us very fast from places we expected and from places we didn't expect here. We have a growing dispersed workforce. We manage over 100,000 employees worldwide here. We have competitors coming for the same talent, the hiring people from Microsoft who will come into Facebook as well, go to Google, go to Amazon, and of course, our, our employees are asking for innovation fast. They're saying, you know, what is going to keep me, you know, happy at Microsoft here? And our goal is to, how do we reimagine our business so we are using technology to stay ahead of the competition, stay ahead of business challenges here? Our mission has remained the same, to help people and businesses realize their full potential. And we do this by the way we work and the way we look at our customers. How do we drive revenue? How do we compete? At the end of the day, how do we transform to become a more agile organization here? So I want to share with you here that all of Microsoft runs in the cloud here. In 2011, we set our internal goal to run 80% of our application infrastructure in the cloud. Two years later, we updated that mission to say that all of Microsoft needs to run in the cloud. 
while cloud computing technology were advancing here, we were making the bet in the cloud. So through our modern workplace initiative here, Microsoft supports a diverse mobile workforce of 180,000 employees. That's employees, contractors, vendors, partners, VDash accounts, and so forth here. We have over 513 locations in 113 disparate countries here. And these countries have their own regulations, policies, and firewalls, and so forth. But as an organization, we are committed to reducing travel and enabling people to work effectively anywhere. We've truly embraced the modern workplace every month for our IT organization, and we have 4.5 million remote connections, 6.6 .6 million Skype calls per month, and more than 100,000 Microsoft employees use Yammer, our social platform, to basically work out loud and clamor together. In addition, we're empowering our field with modern apps and devices. You know, BYOD was a nice play term Gartner developed. Well, we truly developed BYOD to become the empowering concept for our, for our people here. And initially, it was very uncommon for our employees to work on iPhones and Android devices. But now, we're seeing it everywhere. People are using iPhones, iPads, tablets, Android devices, as well as Surface devices here. And our goal is to provide a great and powerful app across every device as well. At the showcase, you know, we've built a developer environment that our apps are available across any portfolio here, and we're doing this by a variety of ways, by enabling development environments, by showcasing people how to do things, and also developing the apps our customers can leverage as well here. And lastly, we're doing this by making sure we're green. We're improving our energy within our buildings, our data centers as well, and we're saying that, look, let us show you how to do these things here. As such, we invite our customers to come and touch the cloud Come visit our data centers. Come visit our offices. Come do a work role spot with us. We have a Microsoft IT Institute where employees can come shadow a Microsoft IT employee for weeks on time, and a Microsoft employee will shadow you at your organization as well, so we can learn from you as well. These are the things we're doing across to enable our modern workforce, workforce and work environment as well. I think the reason we can all agree is that the, wor the world we live in has changed here. We live in a world where devices outnumber the people and create more data than people can consume here. The pace of change is faster than ever. Technology has led to disruption in not only our personal and professional lives here. We used to talk about trends as if they were silos, consumerization of IT, BYOD, IoT. These trends are still important and have great impact by themselves, but their combined impact is greater. And we need to reimagine productivity in order to remain successful by understanding what does consumerization, IoT, big data, trending, how does that mean for a corporation here? By bringing all those together is where we can drive value for our customers and our enterprises here. And we at Microsoft are doing this by enabling the workforce through the new office. Office 2016 and Office 365 have been built on a platform of creativity and modernization here. So devices will have the touch experience, the pen experience, mouse and keyboard. And you know, in our use case studies, we, we tested it with young kids, you know, younger than 10 years old. We gave them a keyboard and a mouse, and they intrinsically started working together with keyboard and mouse, touching the screen, working together, swiping, sharing. It almost became intrinsic to them. And there was no fear of, of, of touching the screen at all here. We've modernized our apps, made them touch enable here. We're enabling different platforms on Android phones and iOS. You know, news feed, microblogging, Facebook type experiences are standard across our entire platform. HD video and Skype federation are almost a requirement now. Customers are saying that I want to federate my partners and my customers here. I want to be able to talk to them across any device, any platform. That's almost a requirement of Paramount now. The other thing is, IT doesn't want to go ahead and do updates anymore. They don't want service packs. They don't want updates. So through Office 365, everything will be always up to date for you and on demand available to you when you're ready. So we will go ahead and handle all changes in the back end by ourselves so without disrupting you. And any user level changes, you can go ahead and deploy to users when you see fit here. And also we allow for great control in the sense that we have data loss prevention functionality, we have data retention. So using our Office 365 controls here, you know your data is safe, you know your data is secure. 
Moving on here, we've gone ahead, as I mentioned before, release Office for iPad, the Android and mobile devices here. And the beauty of this is that we haven't given you a stripped down version of Office or a web only version of Office. It is a fully fledged working functional of Office environment here that is simply secure, that is managed by our policy so you know your data will be safe. You can go ahead and wipe a person's uh, enterprise data or corporate data while ensuring that personal data is not touched or affected as well here. Through our suite of Office 365 and Intune here, we're allowing neural controls where if you send a confidential document to a user and they open it in the iPad, they cannot cut, copy, or paste any of the content and bring it into a different environment here. We're locking down secure access to all of everything within the Office 365 environment here. And lastly, we want to make sure that the document looks great here. So you don't see any loss in transition of a document going from a mobile device to a tablet to a PC. Everything will look the same. And this is paramount because there's no learning curve for your users. Everything will look the same, work the same, no matter what platform you're using here. That's a big deal because training is paramount to a company. So if, a comp if a user doesn't understand the tools, they won't use the tools and they won't be effective as a whole. Secondly here, we're seeing an increased need to collaborate internally and externally here. You know, enterprise file sync and share. Before in the past, what do we do? We had to collaborate internally and externally. We email PowerPoint files, we email documents, and those files could be only a certain size. But nowadays with video files, with graphic files and CAD files, some files can be gigabytes in size, megabytes in size here, so they can't be sent via email. So what are employees doing? Sending USB disks. You're sending them externally through unsupported means. Now through OneDrive for Business here, a user can access their files anywhere, anytime. They're seamlessly integrated with the Office platform. And lastly, they can share and collaborate securely with their partners, their vendors, their consultants, while maintaining enterprise-grade security, compliance, and order as well. That's why OneDrive for Business is, key, is a key part of Office 365 and ties everything together here. So let me share a quick story here. Uh, as you know, I used to work for McGraw-Hill, a very large publisher organization. I spoke to one of my editors. I asked him, how long does it take to create a chapter in a book? They go, well, if it's a, a novel or a, uh, a consumer-type novel, maybe a month or so. I said, why so long? They said, the author writes a page. He sends it to the editor for review. The editor makes changes. He sends it back. That same changes goes back and forth three or four times. Then it goes to the photographer. Again, all those changes are done you know, very, you know, very granularly in a very manual process done via email. And the documents were stored in an FTP site, requiring IT to always change passwords, change permissions, add users, modify users. It became very manually intensive. By going through one drive of business, the author began a document, began a novel. He automatically shared it with his editor and photographer. They were modifying it in real time as the author was writing it, the changes were happening. The creation of a book of a chapter went from one month to one week, thereby resulting in more content, more text, more, uh, more, uh, more, more books being released, which led to higher bottom line revenue for the customer. So all this was linked to the fact that the cloud allowed better productivity, better creating, better creativity, and also ensuring enterprise gradients and controls. Can you imagine if the last Harry Potter novel got out or leaked? That would be a multi-billion dollar hit there. So, we want to make sure we control our data in the best way possible. As I mentioned before, we do have device support, of course, any device while maintaining control. On the same note, for OneDrive here, we are offering unlimited space at the consumer side. And with today on Office 365 Enterprise side, we offer one terabyte of storage. Now, many CIOs argue that they need more space. But no, no single user has a terabyte of space. So, you know, let's, let's forget that conversation here. But by offering a one terabyte of space, what does that mean for the CIO? All his file shares go away. All his backups go away. All the things that he's challenged with maintaining in the IT infrastructure go away and everything can be stored on OneDrive. On the user's home drive goes away and it's shared directly on OneDrive here. Secondly, to maintain security and functionality here, we have our Intune suite here. The Intune functionality allows you to protect data on mobile devices without sacrificing productivity. A scenario is, if I borrow somebody's iPad here, I will log in to Office 365 to my email. On the first time access here, 
My entire office experience is locked down, managed in that individual session there. And in two, the final policy that IT has uh, control saying, this user is using an unmanaged device. He can only do certain things like view and reply to his email or create new ones, but he cannot cut, copy, or modify content there. And this is becoming a great requirement because people are using iPads, Surfaces, and you know, Android tablets as their primary device. So we want to make sure the administrator can manage all these policies and how data is shared between managed and unmanaged device, but also give you full other functionality as well here. These are things we're seeing our customers always asking for us, and you know, we, Microsoft, are taking the customer feedback and listening to it and modifying it as well. In addition, we're going to see continuous improvement and continuous evolution in the office experience here. As trends change, as customer requirements change, you'll see an evolution of Office 365 delivered to you automatically. And lastly, I want to wrap up with the fact that trust. You know, Office 365 has built-in capabilities and trust controls. When I say trust is that we are best-in-class security. You know, and the way I say is that we've taken our 30, 40 years of experience in delivering an enterprise-grade service, and now we've made it cloud-ready. We haven't taken a consumer service and called it enterprise-ready. We've taken a proven Exchange 5.5, Exchange 03 service, and made them cloud-ready by allowing customers access to their data directly through rights management services and so forth. We're fully compliant to every country, every clause, so we have compliance policies for Germany, for the EU, for the US, and even for China. And, and most importantly, we are designed with privacy built in. Now, I know what the NSA and the, you know, uh, the CIA monitoring emails and so forth, and I'll share a story with you. When the, when the C NSA comes to Microsoft requesting a customer's email, our first response is talk to the customer. If they come back with a subpoena, we obviously have to give it to them, right? So we, we follow, but we, we abide by U.S. law. But now we're saying through customer lockbox, a feature that allows you, the customer to say, this data for our CEO or CFO is completely locked down. Not even Microsoft can get to it. When the CIA comes to us asking us for the CEO's email, our response is, talk to the customer. Only the customer has access to it. Not even Microsoft has access to this. The customer has to authorize release of that email or their content through customer lockout functionality. So we're ensuring privacy is built in from day one and across the board there. Moving on in the sense that we take in additional protections to make sure we're physically secure. And the way I, I say is that before in Microsoft, I would say to a customer, we were dating. We sold you software, we kind of helped you deploy it, and then we talked to you and periodically give you roadmap updates. It was a great relationship, Microsoft was very profitable. But now with the cloud, I think we're dating. Now we're not dating anymore, we're married now. You are entrusting your lifeblood to Microsoft to deliver a grade A quality service. And that marriage is that if you're not happy, we're not happy. So we want to make sure we've taken precautions on every layer to make sure your data is independently verified and meets every security standard. That way we cannot be hacked or intruded upon. We are the number two, let me say this properly here, uh, not hacked, but uh, attacked company in the world aside from the DOD here. We are you know, constantly being threatened by different organizations, but we are making sure our data is constantly safe and those hacks can't come in. We have a cyber security team, a red, green, a red team and a green team who are constantly testing our network, constantly testing our software to ensure that your data is always kept safe at a whole here. And the reason we do this is that you know, we're married now because we want to make sure that we meet your compliance requirements. We meet your security standards and requirements as well. And we've taken this a step further by ensuring that we meet every country, every requirement that have been set aside by Germany, by EU, by Latin America, and so forth here. Is that Office 365 has operationalized security into a scalable process that can quickly meet and adapt to security trends and industry-specific needs here. And we enable risk management reviews by third-party auditors because we know this is paramount to our customers saying that they want to ensure that we are independently verified and independently audited. And you know, we make everything public. We can share our covenants policies. We can share our commitments to data privacy and security. 
Many of you may have seen our blogs and our articles in the press here. Our, our chief legal officer, Brad Smith, is basically going to the Supreme Court and say the U.S. government does not have rights to data stored in different countries. And that's a paramount principle we firmly believe in. So these are things we're taking to defense in behalf of our customers to ensure that we follow every guidelines, every policy. And we do this by ensuring there's no advertising. We're fully transparent and we fully make sure we meet every privacy control that's out there here. And compliance is becoming very more paramount because we had a customer who was making jet engines for the government. And I asked the CIO, if someone takes the blueprint for your jet engines sell them to North Korea, China, how you audit that? How you maintain that? How you lock it down here? And these are things because we know people are coming in with iPads and tablets and so forth. They want full access to data, but conversely, we want to make sure we identify where that data is being shared. We want full auditability. We want full reports. So much so that now with certain use cases, we've developed policies and work, workflows in place. So if I want to send Rachel my credit card numbers for everybody I know about, It'll say, Rachel, here are credit card numbers. That email can do three things. One, it can be sent automatically, and a, and a violation can be triggered in, in, our, in our compliance center, and our security can review it. Number two, that email can be appear to be sent, but it goes to security for review. They can review it, then go ahead and send it. Or number three, that email can be blocked automatically because we are scanning that email before it's sent, saying, this, uh, this violates company policies. So whether it's credit card numbers, social security numbers, or healthcare information, those policies can be set and defined by each individual corporation level saying this meets our policy or this violates our policy. And we put built-in controls to say certain things can be set or cannot be set as a whole. And, and lastly, I want to say that you know we take this people-centric compliance policy to heart in the sense that we are saying that no matter where anybody is here, People-centric compliance is paramount to us because we want to say that making security is a natural part of the tools we've built in. And we're saying that we will make sure your data is safe and secure no matter what device it's on, ensuring IT policies are put in place, ensuring governance policies are put in place, and ensuring that you have the compliance and the rigor you need to do your job. So at the end of the day, Office 365 is a complete office in the cloud with business class email, file sharing, full unified communication, full technical support, with full input SLAs, simple management, and anywhere access across the board here. And lastly, I want to say that we are meeting and exceeding customer expectations here. We have grown 84% year over year since fiscal year 09. We are signing up 100,000 customers per month, if not more. Just look at our last, uh, annual, uh, last quarterly statements about two days ago here. And you'll see that we are exceeding customer expectations by ensuring delivery of these services, having customer utilization, customers are deploying all services, and more so, we're delivering new features of functionality through Power BI, Dell, Office Analytics. All those things are based on customer feedback and customer conversation. So with that, with that being said, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I'm available to you for any questions. My email is amitp at microsoft.com. Please do not hesitate to engage me or give me a call back to help with anything. Rachel, shall we open it up for conversation? Yes, um, and I have gotten a few questions. That was awesome, Amit. Thank you so much. Um, we have some questions around OneDrive, some questions around um, sort of balancing all of these different um, priorities and strategies. So let's start out with um, a question around um, small businesses or even medium-sized businesses and this person was pointing out that they understand all of the points that you're making for larger global businesses but in the small business they feel like they can't keep up with the pace of change so just as they get one change down or implemented in their organization Microsoft introduces another um, so I guess the question is like how does the information apply or how should the small business consume these uh, these strategies and this information. So that's a great thing, right? So what Microsoft is doing is that we are doing changes obviously on your behalf that have no user impact. So we'll take care of it by ourselves. Secondly, when a change is released here, we release it to the Office 365 admin console. The IT administrator in the small business will be notified of the change. He can review the change. He can go ahead and test it with a few users 
somebody in finance, somebody in marketing, test it out and roll it out, see if it works. If he's happy with it, he can click a button and roll out to everybody across the enterprise relatively easily. But if he's not happy with the change or he doesn't want to deploy the change, he can delay that change for a period of up to two years. And we'll make sure we're fully backup compatible on the you know, N-2 versions of browsers and office clients as well. So he doesn't have to deploy that change. Unlike a competition who automatically release a change when they want here, we truly believe to your point, you're a small business. You may not be able to keep up with pace of change. So you have a choice what changes you want to deploy and when you want to deploy them as well. Awesome. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I think that backwards compatibility issue is key for a lot of people. Um, so next question. Wait, one more oh, thing. Go ahead. Many yeah. of our customers are small to medium businesses. They know that they're going to grow and expand. They're going to know that they will go to overseas markets. They may go public. They're realizing by going to Office 365 today, they have the built-in tools that will help their organization grow. So they need SEC approval. They need compliance approval. All those tools are built in. So let's start with Office 365 from the get-go. And they're you know, leveraging the smaller SKUs, or the, you know, the E1 SKUs, for example, and ramping up the higher workload SKUs when they need it as well. Yes, definitely. Foundation is there. Um, all right, so the next question is a seemingly simple one, but I think a lot of folks are confused about this. Um, whether or not OneDrive for Business gives purely unlimited storage or if it's actually one terabyte. And I don't know it if you have any one, insight in that. <laughs> oh, so it is, on the enterprise side today, it is one terabyte for the enterprise. On the consumer side, it is unlimited. So on the enterprise side, we have seen a requirement or ask for, for unlimited. That is being worked on. It, it's literally around the corner. We'll be making announcements for this hopefully soon, but it, it is a requirement, and we have heard it, and we have, we have addressed it. Got it. Great. Um, and then another sort of yes or no question, and I actually don't know what this means, but you might. Um, is Office 365 ITAR compliant? Yes, we, we are ITAR compliant. What ITAR is a government-controlled cloud environment. So yes, we do have many enterprise and federal customers, and ITAR is a requirement as needed if you're dealing with government agencies that do defense and security as well. So yes, uh, Microsoft has actually has several clouds. It's not only one cloud. We have the Office 365 you know, uh, enterprise cloud. We also have the Office 365 government control or the ITAR cloud, which means that only government con government customers or your know, defense contractors are on that cloud only. Nobody else. We don't intermix you know, enterprise and ITAR cloud together. They're totally separate. And lastly, we have the dedicated cloud, meaning if the customer wants their own server, their own rack in the data center, we can provide that as well. So we do our, we are ITAR compliant. Awesome. Um, and so I think we have time for one last question. If anyone has any last minute ones, feel free to enter them and we'll see what we can get to. Um, so I believe that this question is answered by the introduction of the next generation OneDrive for Business sync client. Uh, but somebody is right. asking here if OneDrive for Business is restricted to 20,000 files. And I understood that that limit was removed with that sync client. Is oh, that right. correct? Okay. That is correct. And also, if you go to the OneDrive uh, on the Office Blog website, there's an announcement on the OneDrive Next Gen Sync Client. There is a link in there. Uh, let me know if you can't find it. I'll send it to you. You can sign up for the Next Gen Sync Client and it'll list all the new features that came out with there. Yeah, that is great. And I know we've covered that a little bit on 365ninja.com, and it, we're definitely going to cover it more because a lot of people are excited about that, <laughs> us included. All right. So... Um, let's go to one last question, and I think this is a really great question um, to end on. So um, this person says, I work for a large company that is converting to Office 365 from a hybrid environment. Management is reluctant to move to a mobile office environment with the nine-hour day still trumping the workforce. Um, how have customers converted from this practice to a more mobile workforce? And I think this is addressing kind of an idea I've heard a lot that the transition, um, you know, uh, a lot of companies are sort of in one or the other, the very modern work style or the very traditional work style. And I guess, do you have any um, any input or any advice for sort of that transitional stage? So, so Barry, uh, first of all, thank you for signing for Office 365. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, I work for McGraw-Hill. We were a 100-year-old plus family-owned company that was public. 
as you can imagine, very challenging. And you know, all requirements was come to the office every day. We had to be in the office, bound to our desk here. And, and honestly, it took some time here. It, it took some benefit, and it took a leader uh, to go ahead and make that change. So, for example, in IT, we began with a one-day work-from-home policy. Do your choice when you want, uh, once a month, work from home. And that gave them flexibility. It's okay, my job is still getting done. And then we allowed maybe twice a month work from home. And then we allowed, if you were on duty or on call, you get to work from home that week so you could address calls better. It took a relative slow uh, movement, but it still requires somebody to step forward and say, okay, work from home one day. Or, or B, our meeting will be held off-site. And either through partnerships with certain leaders, through partnership with HR, and then lastly, Barry, I would propose that uh, allow our HR to meet with your HR. I can help facilitate a call. We can share with you some of the things we've learned, some of the things we were conflicted with as well, as well as all the customers and how we made that change to make sure that users and employees are measured, saying, you're measured to do a job. At the end of the day, we don't care where you do it from as long as the job is done. And their accountability, the individual accountability, was a shift in user thinking as well as user behavior. You know, I'm challenged to come in and deliver this product or this functionality. If I can deliver it, guess what? It really doesn't make a difference where I deliver it from here. So I'm happy to go ahead and set up a conversation with HR meter as well. Awesome. And I think that is the perfect note to end on. Um, and I just, we had a question to send the sync client link. So I attempted to send it in the chat window here, but I will also send it um, in the follow-up email to the session. But it looks like it's uh, preview.onedrive.com slash sync. So, yep, we'll end it there. Thank you so much, Amit. We covered a lot of great information. And thanks to all the attendees. I hope to see some of you in our um, two additional sessions this afternoon. Um, in about an hour and the three hours, respectively. Um, and I'm going to be ending the webinar now. So thanks very much, and, everyone. And Rachel, there's one question here. The slides, I'll send them to you and please both to the uh, colleagues here. Oh, perfect. Yep, I will do that. All right. Thanks very much. Bye.